Okay. Um, one comment that I've made in the slideshow is the force vectors and the how to uh, create a force vector and um, draw a diagram. Diagrams are going to be absolutely essential. You cannot get the mathematical representation of Newton's laws without having uh, a ready-made graphical representation. Now a couple of things we are going to do with this uh, if you'll notice, I have my track up, and I hope that's within focus, but I have a I.O. lab sitting on my pad, and it is connect. it has the force sensor set up. Now, the nice thing about the I.O. lab is that it does have its own force sensor attached to it. Uh, I do have a force sensor on this track, but I'm not going to use it. Uh, but I do want to use the I.O. lab to illustrate a rather interesting effect. Newton's first law states that all objects shall remain in a state of uniform linear motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So what I'm going to do now is actually do an equilibrium um, demonstration with at the IO lab and as you can see and maybe uh, hopefully you can there is a mylar a plastic uh, hook uh, attached to the I.O. lab device and you can see that there is a string attached to that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the I.O. lab along with constant velocity but there you go you're going to probably say well wait a minute in order to pull it you're going to exert a force on it and therefore there should be an acceleration or there should be something going on there. There actually is and it's called the force of friction. Later on in the catalog of forces you're going to hear about uh, resistive forces and one of the resistive forces is a contact force between a body and um, a surface. So in this case if you take a look at the I.O. lab and I'll just set it up here so you can see it it has three felt pads on the bottom, okay? And we're going to put those felt pads on this aluminum track. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the device along, try and do it with as much constant velocity as I can. It's a little tricky. <clears throat> so right now, I'm gonna re-zero the sensor, the force sensor. I have the accelerator, accelerometer on there because I'm actually going to use it to measure the acceleration of the device. I want that acceleration as small as possible while I'm towing the device. It may seem like a very boring experiment, but it actually is an important one because it establishes uh, the life of this force called friction. So let me just go ahead and click record and then I am going to grab the string and drag it along for a little bit. So here we go. I'm recording and I pull the string, pull, 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 pull. You see there's no force. And now I'm going to make the string as horizontal as I can and I'm going to start the object moving. You can see from the graph that there's something happening here. Now I'll stop and we'll stop the recording and let's take a look at what's going on. So clicking on my zoom tool, I'm going to zoom in on the acceleration. You can see that's very small, but here, this get, this uh, the force diagram is what's very interesting. So I'm going to blow this up now. Here, if we were to take the average, so I'll click on the analysis tool, and I'll go on the average over this region where I'm moving, you can see the, the acceleration, the average acceleration, is 0.067. There is hardly any slope to that. You can see that here, so it really doesn't change. And we can put it at 0.07. Once again, the ones are zero, the tenths are zero, the hundredth is not, and the thousandth is not. And if we just go with three significant figures, this would be 0.07 meters per square second. This is a reasonable um, number to actually say yes this uh, this uh, acceleration is zero okay so what's happening here remember that acceleration 
is supposed to indicate that there's a force and vice versa. There is indeed a force happening here. If we look right in this region right here, you can see where I'm just starting to pull, pull, pull. And you'll notice from here, from this point about T equals seven and a half to about 7.37 to about, oh, let's see. There's really nothing happening here from T equals zero all the way up to about T equals 7.72. But then something starts happening at 7.86 and we're going along here. You'll notice that the graph um, slopes down, that's a line. And you could actually probably take a little analysis of that line, try and figure out what's going on. Uh, you'll notice that the slope is changing by 0.5 Newtons per second. Uh, oh, 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 sorry, my bad. Here we go, 0.17 Newtons per second. There's the slope of the graph. This is a very interesting object uh, quantity. It's called status, static friction because you'll notice the acceleration is zero. And you'll all, you can also prove that there's really nothing happening there, meaning that the object is not moving. However, once it reaches this point right here, at t equals 9.25 seconds, look what happens to this region right here. This is what is called static friction. From here to about here is static friction. Now I can make this a little cleaner. Let me just go ahead and smooth it out a little bit. So I'll smooth it to seven. And there was the peak is a little more prominent there it makes a little bit more sense. But here is your peak. This is called static friction. This is the frictional, the resistive force that acts so as to oppose change in motion. This second force from here about 12, 11 seconds through about um, 16 seconds is called kinetic friction. This is the force that's acting to resist motion while the object is already sliding. Now, since we've done this and we take a look at the graph, let me now pull up a way of visualizing this. And I'm now going to bring up um, my drawing program. I'm gonna use Mathematica for it. And here, let's take a quick gander. Hang on just a moment, I'm letting this thing launch. <coughs> About eight, eight seconds. Okay, so this is ready to go. I'll pick in a new document. And I'm more interested in graphing than anything, than in, not graphing, but drawing than anything else. So let's take a look at the IO lab on the track. So I'm going to insert a graphic. I'm going to pull up my drawing tools. Go. Ah, here we go. Move them over so you can see them. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a, a, a track, a representation of the track. That's going to be my little box here. And we'll make that black. That's perfectly fine. And now I'm going to represent my I.O. lab on its felt feet. So I'm going to change the color of this before I go and do anything. So since the I.O. lab is blue, I might as well use blue. And there we go. Oops, I changed the wrong thing. All right, well, we'll work with it. Here is my I.O. lab. And I'll change the color of this. Okay. Now, the question is, what are the forces in the horizontal direction that are acting on the I.O. lab? 
So once again, we follow our procedure, and I'm going to make a coordinate system that is going to be positive going up. Let me just straighten that out. And positive going to the right. So there are my positive directions, the orange arrows. So now I want to make a um, representation of the force. Cancel that, just a second. There we go. I don't want to change those arrows. Those are my coordinate system. So whenever I'm doing a diagram, I'm going to do a coordinate system first. So here's my object. This is my IO lab. Here is the surface that it is on, and here is my coordinate system. Now let's start including forces. There were two forces that were actually acting on the I.O. lab. So acting on the I.O. lab, and I'm going to make this color um, black so that we can distinguish it from other things. So I'll click OK there. And we all know, we saw that I was pulling it with a string. So there's going to be a force due to the string acting on the IO lab. I'll drag that out and I will call that. There's my force and that is my applied force. So I'll call it F. Applied. Good. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my arrow back and Mathematica can be a little fussy. So I'm going to um, make sure that that's working. Notice that the force, the application force, the applied force here is acting to the right. So it will be considered a positive force. It's acting, it's the agent is my hand and the string. I am pulling on the IO lab, so that's the subject. This is the force being applied to the subject, that is the agent, and that the agent is my hand pulling on the string. But look, there is another force here that acts after I, it reaches a certain point here to here. So I am going to draw another force on the I.O. lab. And because I need to keep it, um, keep, keep it lined up as much as I can, uh, I am going to do the force down here. And I will make this force really, really dark because I want to beat the surface. So here is my next force. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Nope. Okay, so here is my arrow. Click my arrow. I'm going to make it super thick so you can see it. And I am going to drag that force starting at the IO lab on the surface. I am going to put it here. And I'm trying to make it the same size. So when you're drawing these diagrams out, it is really, really important to make it the same size as the um, force applied for this particular case. Now I'm looking, again, let me show you my force diagram or my, my data. So here again is my data, and I'm going from here to here. So the agent, in this case, is going to be the aluminum surface of the track. The object is my I.O. lab, and there's an applied force that I have applied to the I.O. lab to get it to slide. I pull, 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 but from here to here, these forces are the same. 
because the object is not moving. Remember Newton's first law, all objects shall remain in a state of rest or uniform motion unless a uniform linear motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force. These forces are balanced. So I'm going to put a label on this particular force. I am going to call it little f. So there is my little f, and this is a friction force. So I'm going to make the text a little bit bigger. I think that did the job. Okay, so there you have it. There is my friction force acting. It didn't really didn't make it bigger. Sorry about that. Um, there is my opposing force to motion. Here is, let me get back into the diagram. So here is my IO lab. Here is the applied force. Here is the force of friction. And aside from artist error, um, they should be the same size. Now another way of doing this is just doing it with the point particle representation. So I am going to extend my graphic just one little bit more. Uh, that's not working out very well. So let me actually select all this stuff here and these two. I'm going to group it. so I can slide it up a little bit. There we go. Everything is grouped. Here we go. Remember uh, the particle method of um, representing a, an object in motion. Here you see my blue rectangle is actually the IO lab and it is blue as you've seen. But I'm going to represent this as a particle instead because it makes seeing what's going on that much easier. And I'm not going to put a surface down. So here I've changed my color. Wasn't supposed to change that. Uh, I've changed my color for my next object. So I'm going to put a dot down to represent the IO lab. So this will be my little circle. There it is. And I'm going to put the two forces that were acting on it. So once again, let me just make those red instead of black now. Um, I just thought it'd probably be a little bit easier to see. Ah, darn it. Okay, hang on just a second. There we go. Uh, so I want stroke to be red. it all the way out here. Okay. And now I'm going to take my arrow. And again, the coordinate sister is up in the orange arrows at the very top of the diagram. So once again, here is my applied force acting this way. And uh, aside from artist error, I'm trying to make this as um, clean as I can. Click OK. So there is my force, uh, the applied force, here on the dot just before it starts moving is my friction force. And it should actually be the same. So I'll just go ahead and give it the color that I want it to have. There you have it. So there's the applied force, there's the friction force. And again, the diagram, the plus, the, the indication of positive direction and positive direction is here. Now these are not the only forces acting on the IO lab. The IO lab has a weight. We measured, the last time I measured the mass of this guy, it was about, um, 200 grams or 0.2 kilograms. So there's another force that's going to act. And I am going to clear this out and I'm going to use my dot instead of trying to mess around with the um, first picture. 
I'm going to use my dot to represent that. There is a force acting downward, which is called the weight. The weight is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We've already seen that that acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per square second. And I'm not going to worry about that too much. But here is another force that is acting, but it's acting perpendicular to the direction of motion. So I'm going to draw this diagram down here. There's the weight. That's the weight. Okay, and I'm going to make it blue if, if uh, Mathematica lets me. Okay, well, we're not going to fuss with it. It's wasting time. So one other force that's acting. This is something that's going to come out of Newton's third law. It's called the reaction force. The reaction force acts whenever I put something down on a table. You'll notice that the I.O. lab, let me cut back to the video camera for just a second. You notice that the I.O. lab sits on the track. So there is a weight from the I.O. lab acting on the track. The track is going to exert a force equal and opposite to this uh, weight force acting. So I have one more dot I need to put on to my diagram. So that is try and make it the same length. There we go. I'll try and move it over a little bit. So, this guy here, and I'll try and select it again. This force here is the weight acting down on the track. This force here, so I'm actually the one that's da acting down on the track, I'm going to give it a name. I am going to call that force W. And hopefully you can see that um, sitting next to the um, next to the arrow of concern. So here is my W. Let's see if I can get that to go somewhere. No, it's being difficult today. Okay. This other force pointing up on the I.O. lab has a name as well. We, it's a reaction force of the aluminum track on the I.O. lab. So again, this whole subject-object agent thing is pretty important. The object is going to be the I.O. lab. The um, agent is going to be the track and the force is pushing upward and we call that force M for normal force. So there you have it. It's acting upward. So here are the forces again just to summarize that. We have the applied force. We have the friction force, static friction force. We have the normal force and we have the weight. So whenever you're doing a problem, and it doesn't have to be the I.O. lab on a track, it can be any problem, an object on a pulley, two objects on a pulley, you'll see those problems actually. The first thing you've got to do is draw a diagram. And next you have to identify all the forces and then you have to keep in mind what the agent is and what the um, object is. So again, the object, the object is my I.O. lab. The applied force is the force due to the string. The agent is the string. This one, this is the friction force. So here is the friction force. It is the object is again the I.O. lab. 
the agent is going to be the track, the roughness of the track itself. Now that track is not supposed to be very rough, but we'll have to discuss that another for another demonstration. And then we have the two forces in the vertical direction, the weight of the I.O. lab acting on the track. That's W. The, way, the normal force, the track acting on the I.O. lab, that's N. That's the normal force. So hopefully this is, will make some sense.